Hey everyone, it's Sunday the 17th of September and it's 5.40 in the afternoon. Right, today's video. Um, I've got some new barricade lamps in my collection, so we'll have a look at those. I've got three in total. These two here, one up on the shelf. I have got a box of die cast here, which I think you can just about see. This is a mix of stuff I got from last week's car boot sale at Alsham and then I think about three days before that I actually got a box of stuff from the diecast guy which also had a Hornby double O gauge locomotive in it and we'll have a look at that as well it's hiding behind the box somewhere and I've also fixed another one of my locomotives that's been sitting under the desk for at least six months only because I was too lazy to fix it <laughs> it was such an easy fix as well I've just been too lazy and I forgot about it um, so we'll have a look at that one as well um, and on the floor I've got a bag of die cast that I picked up from the die cast guy about 20 minutes ago and uh, I am a sweating in here ah there's a towel that I made earlier oh. you know it's actually quite cool outside in fact, according to my PC, it's only 18 degrees outside. I think it's actually a bit cooler than that because there's a breeze. Um, but I can guarantee my room temperature is still up in at least the mid-20s. Actually, it's a bit higher than that because I can see it from here. It's about 28 room temperature. A lot more comfortable than 31 degrees, I can tell you that. It's amazing how just 4 degrees like that, how much of a big difference it actually is. But yes, about 28 degrees in here. Right, we're going to start the barricade lamps and then we'll go on to um, the locomotives. We'll do the die cast last basically because that's going to take the longest. There's quite a bit in this box and there's quite a bit in the bag. So, these barricade lamps, let me just adjust the camera. Right, these two I bought on eBay, I can't remember, I think it was last Sunday, as a pair. Um, now, I didn't really need these two in the collection because I've already got plenty of them, but I wanted this one for a specific, well, two reasons, which we'll get into in a minute. Now, I had already seen these on eBay. I just hadn't really given them much attention because, like I said, I've got the, uh, the traffic light and the traffic lamp. I've got several of them in the cupboard. Um, but uh, a friend of mine on Facebook, who also collects lamps, sent me a link to this listing and asked if I'd noticed what was written on the side of this lamp. And I hadn't, actually, because I hadn't really looked at the listing. Um, so when I looked, I thought, you know what? I know they're expensive for the pair, because I'm not going to lie, they were 50 quid for the pair. Um, free shipping, I believe that was. Well, I suppose it's in the price, isn't it? I thought, I'm going to go for it. Because I haven't got one with this particular supplier's name on it. Which to me makes this quite a rare version we could call it <laughs> variant whatever you want to call it of this lamp and plus it would actually go with my other couple of pieces that I've got um, with the same name on so this is what it's got written on this side that's the supplier builders equipment Norwich limited so it's a local from a local supplier back in the day and up on my kitchen wall I've actually got a builder's equipment clock and on my fridge where I've got all my uh, paraffin lamps stood I've actually got one on there with builder's equipment in abbreviated letters uh, embossed on the top so that's why I wanted that one this one I'll either put back on eBay for, I don't know like a 10 or see if I can clean it up a bit um, better than it is maybe find a bit of base because that's cracked Although I don't have one with free phone Kendrick hire on it, so I haven't got a Kendrick hire one. 
Oh, one that's actually got a big on on that side and a big off on that side. Um, but yeah, other than that, I've got a number of these traffic lights. I do love them. These are one of my favourite lamps. Um, I am sort of thinking I should have waited a bit to see if the price would get dropped a bit more because I had already been dropped. So I was told, like I said, I hadn't really been paying attention to the ad. I just saw the pictures and ignored it because I thought, well, I've already got them. But because of that builder's equipment, Norwich Limited, I thought I've got to have it. Now, I do apologise for this, Steffi. My hay fever has been a pain in my rear all day. All I've done is sneeze and blow my nose and sniff. It's been extremely annoying and frustrating. And yes, I have had an antihistamine. Well, I just knocked three of them off at the same time. I just knocked my uh, Five Nights at Freddy's collection off. I've got to put them here for now. I'm just not going to put them back up there because I'll probably knock them off again. Right. Now, the same friend that linked me to those two lamps, he messaged me again asking if I was interested in buying this lamp. Um, because he did say years ago um, that if he ever sold this particular lamp that he would ask me first because it is a super duper 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 I can't express it enough rare lamp there it is the Tildon Pilot 180 it's actually got a Pilot 360 base but they're exactly the same base the only difference is the sticker they just put a Pilot 180 on the other one so I'm guessing the base might have got lost for this or damaged at some point so someone's replaced it with a 360 base. I mean, if I really wanted to, I could just peel this bloody sticker off. So, yeah. Like I said, that one is a super rare lamp. Um, and all, all the years I've been collecting, because I do check eBay for, you know, barricade lamps, I don't know, once a week at least, sometimes twice, just to make sure I catch things. Um, I've seen these pop up at least twice in all the years I've been collecting, and they go for three figures, easy. So the 50 quid, including shipping that I paid for this lamp, doesn't make the two seem so expensive now, does it? <laughs> Yeah, but it is actually quite cheap. It sounds expensive for something like this, but in the lamp collecting world, it's actually quite cheap. And it does work. I've got a battery in it, and I can never remember which way I've got to turn it. Is it that way? No. That way. No. Perhaps I was going the right way the first time. I was. But it is actually an LED. Now, these, I believe, were 1990s lamps. So that's quite an early LED. Look at the shimmer. I don't know if the camera itself is going to record it, but when I'm looking on my screen here on the camera, I can see a shimmer. I want to say that. I've never noticed it with these lights that I got from uh, Lidl. The Lovano Lux LEDs. I've not noticed any shimmering. I've not, not heard anyone mention about any shimmering like that. Yeah, I'm really happy to have that. That's a, a very rare one. Very rare and very sought after. I think just about every collector wants one of these. I'm going to stand that down here out of the way. Right, and I think, at least for now, I'm going to put Bonnie back up there. I'll put a little bit back up there. You're not going to sit up there, are you? And Foxy, you can go up there as well. Whoop. Stay. A little bit nearly come back down. Right, Let's move that this way. A quick look at this locomotive. Like I said, it was in this cardboard box of cars I've got. And what I've got here is a uh, 460 Albert Hall. In very good condition, actually. In fact, the only thing wrong that I can find with its cosmetic condition is the fact that 
it's missing the sticker for the Albert Hall on that wheel fender, arch, wheel well, whatever you want to call it. Other than that, it's in good condition. Um, although, I did post this to a, uh, a Discord server I'm on. I posted it in their model railway channel. And someone did have an eagle eye and noticed that the con rods are actually on upside down. If you look, you've got little flat spots on either one. And they're pointing downwards. Well, on a real life locomotive, they would be the oiler pots. And they're upside down, so all the oil would be running out of them right now if it was a real locomotive. Um, I mean, they still work. They still do the job. So I might change them around if it bugs me enough. Now, it didn't work when I put it on the tracks, even though I was told it definitely worked. So I took the body off, put power directly to the motor, and it worked fine. And the wheels were actually pretty clean. And then I noticed... There was no pickups. We've got the board on the bottom here, but there was no pickup. And there was just a bit of wire sticking out through a hole on the bottom, or through the board here, and touching that middle wheel. But the problem is that middle wheel, if you actually look, they're a bit smaller than the other two. So they don't actually touch the rail that well. I think I'm pretty certain they do that for a reason, so it goes around the corners a lot better. Uh, I'm pretty certain that's the reason for that. So. With a little bit of research, i.e. Google image search, <laughs> and eBay, actually no, I found it on eBay, I just searched the Albert Hall on eBay, and just looked at some photos that people had made so I could see what sort of pickup I needed. And then I just typed in eBay, you know, the Albert Hall, and pickups, and got the pickups I needed. And I bought four of them, so I've got some spare. And I knew I needed one for my 08 diesel here. Because all it is, it's literally just like a stiff, just a stiff bit of wire that just clips underneath on that board. And I have literally, I haven't soldered the wire back on, I've literally just got it trapped between this and the board. It's such a tight fit that I was able to do that and make a nice secure connection without having to solder it. So long as it stays like that and it's going around the track, it'll be fine. If it does come off, I'll just have to solder it. It shouldn't, because like I said, it is quite tight fit. Alright, and just quickly, another one I had to fix was this one. I actually did have the um, pickup for it, and it was soldered to the wire, but it all came off and I've actually lost it. It could be on one of them shells back here, or it might just got lost somewhere. So I replaced it. That one is a little bit big, but it does touch the wheels, and it does work, so I'm just going to leave it. And I did the same thing. Well, actually, no, I didn't. I twisted the wire around on this one. Yeah, so they're working. Oh, right. Before we actually dig into this box, I've got two model cars here that I actually bought off of a, um, a chat on a Facebook group. The, what one was it? The Diecast Scrapyard. He does these like sort of 24 hour auctions on there and I just saw these and I put a bid in of one pound which was the start bid and I was the only person to, that left a comment thus left a bid so got these Hot Wheels uh, Toyota pick I think it's a Toyota pickup truck my magnifying glass still up here yep just a quick look If I stand corrected, it's a Mazda. No, I thought it was Mazda. It's made. It says made, not Mazda, you dipstick. I actually cannot read it. It's too shiny. I thought it might have been a Toyota, but that's definitely not a Toyota now that I look at it. <laughs> That is ridiculously difficult to read it on the shiny. I can't, I'm sorry, I just can't read it, it's too shiny. Even with the lights on or off, it doesn't matter. And this one's just a, ma um, a matchbox, relatively modern matchbox from the look of it. Doesn't look like anything special, I think it's a 1990 something Lexus. 
remember his search correct. 1994 Lexus LS400. It is actually quite a nice car. Why can't they just make cars like this still? They really did make some nice cars in the 90s, didn't they? They also made some total crap, but they did make some nice ones. Or maybe I'm just old-fashioned and I like them just because that's what I grew up with. That's a possibility, I guess. Right. Now. I've been playing around with these as well. Um, I got this from Alsham Car Boot Sale, from the Diecast guy, actually. And then in a box that I got from the Diecast guy a few weeks ago, I got this one. Which I was over the moon with because I had a ladder. And this is one that I've had for decades. I'm not kidding, I've probably had that for about 20 years. No ladder and it used to have its windows. This one didn't have any windows or the blue light. So I thought, as it's got the ladder, this is the roughest out of the three and missing the ladder. I'll, I'll drill the rivets, as you can see, pop the glass out and I'll put it in this one. Now, stupid me, I did this one fine. I even took the plastic suspension spring out of there because this was missing it as well. So, yeah, we don't need that now. So, I drilled that one, took the glass out. And I didn't check, did I? I got this one, and without thinking, turned it upside down and drilled the two rivets out. And then realised afterwards it's still got the blue glass in, so I drilled the rivets out the wrong one. So I glued that one back together and then went and found the right one and put the glass in it. It has got a couple of rungs missing off the ladder, but the ladder is there. So I have got one there which is actually ripe for a restoration in the future. Right, now we can dig into the box. I think. There's literally quite a mix in here. Like I said, the stuff I got from the diecast guy when I went to pick this box up. Um, so the stuff that came in the box from him. And then I've also mixed in stuff I got from Alisham Car Boot Sale, which is also stuff from the Diecast guy, as well as other various um, stores and whatnot. So I suppose it should be less jabbering and more looking. So these ones I got from the first store on the first no, I think it's about the third or fourth stall up on the first row. He's often selling stuff like this. In fact, I got one of my model railway hauls from that stall as well um, a couple of months ago. So, pardon me, Matchbox um, Range Rover. The Accident Prevention Unit. <laughs> Super Kings. I can never remember if it's Super Kings or King Size. Actually, now that I think about it, I think... Matchbox used both terms, depending on when they were released, maybe? Anyway, we've also got this Matchbox Bedford skip truck. Missing the skip, as usual. But it's in way better condition, condition, condition rather, than my other one. So I got it, it was only two quid. <laughs> um, I can't remember what the Range Rover was, I think it was about a quid more. Um, I've got that one. These are all from the same stall, by the way. The big corgi mistakes. We're missing a tail light, but I have got one of these in my scrap box. Because someone has done a really bad paint job on it. So I'm going to see if I can pop that tail light off and glue it onto this one. If I was really uh, clever, I could cut the A pillars off the other one and glue them on this one as well. I'm not that enthusiastic. <laughs> We've got another crappy... Oh yeah, that Mercedes that I showed you is a Corgi. That's a Corgi. We were sorry looking crane, but he didn't really charge much extra for it. He just sort of chucked it in, so... Um, there's also this dinky road sweeper. Which is missing its pipe bit. But I'm hoping I could... Uh, perhaps find another rough looking one of these with its pipe make a good one out of the two maybe. I've got another version of this. I've got the one with the orange cab and metallic green body. It's on the shelf and it's in 
much nicer condition than this and has its pipe. And then, from that same store, I've got another Corgi Mazda pickup block construction this time. Missing the tailgate. I can't remember what my white one is. I think it's a British Airways one. I think. Right, next. Actually, this Ford Escort, I can't remember what store that I got this one from. I did pick up another one. Might have been the same store as the other ones I just showed you, actually. Got a much nicer one of these. In fact, it's a mint one of these on the uh, display over there. Right. Now, next three vehicles didn't get from the car boot sale, I got from the diecast guy when I went to pick up the box. They didn't come in the box, I did buy them separately, but I got them at the same time. So we got good old Escort van. So I've got another one of these to add to my collection, not in bad condition really. And because I got that, and because he had this one there as well, I thought I'd get the double decker bus. These are Corgi as well, by the way. So I've got the Manchester Evening News van and bus. And, just because he charged me a tenner for all three, I've got the red one, which has got the BTA, which I think is British Television Awards. Welcome to Britain. It's got like a few other adverts. And it's got a Corgi sticker up there. Nothing like a bit of self-promotion is a <laughs> Corgi sticker on the corner. Right, I have actually got some on the floor down here which came in the box when I picked it up which um, probably going to stick on eBay or something actually. One of those, just because of the wheels, I might stick in the um, what I call a scrap box. Right, if these two were actually part of this box when I picked it up. So we've got a couple of um, Lido vans, outspan. I actually quite like this style of van. I've got a few of these from Lido with different brands on. Uh, what else have we got? That's another one that was included with the box when I bought it. I kept this one because the other one I got is a mustard yellow, so I've got two different colours of it now. Um, what was I've got loads of these now and I have no idea what I'm going to do with them all. It's actually starting to uh, get a tad bit annoying. One of these actually came in the box. The other one I also got from the diecast guy at some point. There's another one in the bag on the floor. There's one in a box behind me. I don't know, I've got at least another two or three kicking around somewhere. In fact, I think I've got at least another two in the uh, car boot box. These just seem to be a ridiculously common casting when it comes to these corgis, but I really like them. Uh, what else did I get in this actual box? That was mostly corgi. I've got another one in my hand. There's another one. I believe that one did. That one did. Those didn't, that didn't, that didn't. I think I've got them all. These ones all came in the box. Yeah, it wasn't a very full box. But it was worth uh, the 20 quid I paid just for that locomotive. So we've got another Mercedes. I do like these castings. I want to do some custom paint jobs on these, which is why I keep. We'll have kept a handful of some duplicates now. Datsun, which is a core. Oh no, it's not the one. I thought those were Corgi rockets. And we've got the Volvo P1800 from Corgi. And a Triumph TR7 in like a. I'm not actually sure if you would consider that a dark brown or black. <laughs> I really don't know. 
but I didn't have it in this particular colour, so that's why I kept that one. And why the others went on the floor. I'm hoping this week that I'm going to actually get a moment um, where I can actually get all the die cast together that I want to sell, arrange it into job lots or singles or whatever I want to do with them, photograph them and get them up on eBay. I've been saying I want to do that for the last couple of months and I still haven't done it. <laughs> right. Everything else in it came from the car boot. That Oh, I forgot about that. There is some 176 scale vehicles in it. One of which I have actually put in the box of stuff that I've got to post out to um, Cat. Which uh, I had partially forgot about, sitting up in the corner in the uh, bedroom. Anyway, I've got this little box, boxed rather, matchbox tractor. It's quite a modern one. I do believe they still do models in these boxes. Uh, I think that was like two quid. They call it the Crop Master. Uh, and I actually got another model from that same lady on her store, and I can't remember. I can't remember if it was the major Audi TT, Audi TT, Audi Quattro here, or if it was the Citroen BX. It was one of these two. I think it was the BX. The more I think about it, I am actually pretty certain that was the Citroen BX. I think I've got that. But this is in pretty good condition and I'm pretty certain my other one isn't. <laughs> right. Just because, another three of the Matchbox Double Decker buses. These are all exactly the same Band-Aid, Plasters, Play Bus. Paint's a bit um, scruffy on them, but and that one's got something blue wedged in the back window. The stickers are in good condition, so I want to keep one of these to put with all my other decent buses until I can find a better one with this sticker. Um, and the other two will go in my big box of double legger buses. So I've just made it a thing to collect them, whether I've got them or not, and I have no idea why I start that, I just did. I can't remember what store I got from. Oh, that's another one that came in the box, another Kojak Buick Regal. That one I had to get when I saw it. It's in reasonable condition. And the uh, front is intact because the bumpers do like to chip. Oh yeah, and I just found another one that was actually part of the box. This little mini. I need to go through my box of corgis through there because I need um, to pull the other one out of my collection and swap it for this one because this one's in pretty much mint condition. And the bumpers are intact, whereas they're not intact on my other one. So. I tend to do that. I do keep my eyes open for ones that are in better condition than models that I've already got in my collection so I can swap them. So this one is one that came off the Diecast Guys stall. This little um, Siku Mark 1 Ford Transit. Apparently it's meant to have a canoe on the roof. Doors open. It's a little bit rough. I don't know how old it is. It's got a metal base though. You don't see that a great deal nowadays. Uh, I'm going to grab them all out because I'm pretty certain that this lot came from the diecast guy. In fact, I know it did. I do love looking through his carry cases of Matchbox and whatnot. And he did have some corkers in there last week, such as this Mark III Escort Cabrio, which has got uh, Beach or Ocean Explorer written on it. I don't think I've ever seen that one before. 
Then you have this Aston Martin Corgi rockets with the removable base, which I have the keys for. I have a couple of them. Aston Martin's not normally my thing, but that is in extremely good condition and actually quite a nice colour. And then we've got the Escort RS2000 in um, this green. And then we've got the, um, a Dukes of Hazard vehicle, one of the trucks. I think I've actually got all of them now. From Ertl. That is a um, Ertl made truck, that one. We've got a Mint Matchbox XR4i Ford Sierra. I've actually been looking for that particular Sierra for a while now. Got basically a mint one of these with the tyres in the back. My other one, I'm 99.9% certain, don't have the tyres in the back and has, the paintwork's a bit rougher. So that's another one um, I can stick in the full sale pile when I dig it out. I've got a few variations of this um, tanker. This one's the uh, Milkster 1. I've got a couple of different Texaco versions and a couple of different shell versions. Mercedes convertible with the windshield. That's not uh, gone missing like they normally do. Got Majorette Datsun. Hot Wheels. No idea what it is, but it's a Hot Wheels. Um, no idea what this one is, but it's a Fiat. Don't know who makes it. It just intrigued me, so I bought that one as well. And a Matchbox Ford T Bird. Actually, I just realised that one didn't come from the diecast guy, that came from a different store. Uh, well, that one, I think I've got this in red already, but this one's in quite nice condition. Like I said, I do want to do some um, custom paint jobs. That and I do like that particular Mercedes. Right, we're nearly there for this box actually. I saw this one, I think it was like a quid or something ridiculous like that. Now, the paintwork's not in the best condition, it's not the worst, but it's not the best. We've got a yellow Matchbox 4 day series wrecker with both hooks. You know how rare it is to find any tow truck, matchbox, call you, whatever, with the tow hook attached. So I've now got the yellow one complete with tow hooks to actually go with my red one, which is also complete with tow hooks. Or well, at least it is now. I think it had one missing and I managed to find one. Was it that one or was it the tow drive? It might have been the tow joe, actually. Right. Now I've got a handful. 176 vehicles and a nice little beetle as well. It's not quite 176 scale, it's a bit big. So we have got, well, I've actually just realised there's another one or two on the floor. Total RAV4. Mercedes, I think. Is that Mercedes front? Freelander, green BMW convertible, I, I've gave Cat my uh, yellow one that I got, BMW Estate and I quite like that one, I'm not sure where that one came from, could it be Swedish, Politi? And finally, another Mercedes. C-Class, I think this was. Memory serve correct. Now, with my model railway, because it is set in modern times, pretty much, you know, with a preserved railway, heritage railway sort of a theme going on, I can use modern cars as well as classic cars. Um, pretty much the same with the locomotives. That's the whole reason I went for that thing. <laughs> so I can just run whatever 
and to splay whatever takes my fancy that day. Um, I did give one to my stepdad as well, that was a little MG, because I thought it was in mint condition and that would actually look cracking on his uh, model railway. But he's going for the 1970s. And a little MG, perfect for that. So, let's get this lot bagged up, boxed up rather, not bagged up, because I just looked down at that bag and I was thinking the bag, the bag on the brain. I'm not putting the locomotive in here. I think I can put these two fire tenders in there. Try to be somewhat gentle with them. I don't want you know damage the paintwork unnecessarily. Really. Well, with a couple of these, it's not really going to make a difference. I don't think you know like that one. It, at a glance, I thought this was matchbox, but it's not. And I can't quite make out what it says. But there is some of these that will go on what I call my special shelf, like that one. Only because I haven't got any more matchbox carry cases to put them in. Or just the trays, you know, to put the cars in. I don't have that either. So I've got two Discord notifications, but I can only see one glowing red notification. Oh well. Do something with that box. Right, let's swap. That on the floor now, we'll get the bag up. I've not actually had a good look at what's in this bag. What I do want is that tub up here because I want to try and transfer from the bag to the tub as we go. The box was falling apart so I couldn't really bring that back. So we just put them in a, a QD bag. I must remember to take a bag with me when I go and get these. Sometimes I do. Right, I know there's a bunch of corners, and I think a lot of them are going to be Jaguars because, I've actually got a matching pair here, um, when I got there he had a huge box there full of Corgi Jaguars, I'll actually show you, this scale, all sorts of ages of Jaguar as well, and they're all boxed, and all mint. Um, that he'd got from Stalin Car Boot this morning. Um, yeah, now I've already got one of these, but this was just a fiver, and this one is in miles better condition than my other one. The other one I'll probably chuck in the scrap box, I'll chuck it on eBay. Um, probably chuck it on eBay actually. But yeah, this is the Coast Guard one, and apparently it's a rarer one. To be honest, I've not seen many of the Coast Guard ones either. I've got a police one as well. <clears throat> yeah, it does look... Well, I've got some boxed corgis in here. I'll do those last because they ain't going to get in that box as is. There does seem to be a number of Jaguars. Oh, bloody... Mini! <laughs> in fact, one of these Morris Miners that I've got under here, I'm going to post to... Um, a YouTuber who I actually moderate his Discord server for because he's actually got a Morris Miner that he wants to restore in the future and I actually thought if I'm posting one he could stick it on his um, dashboard yeah, I've got mini I don't need that one got another one <clears throat> I need another tub actually so I'm to put some of this stuff beside it so we've got so far, anyway, at least two of these. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to put that one in my scrap box. So it has actually got an A pillar, it's actually got an A and a B pillar missing. And I've both got the toe hooks damaged. Yeah, so that one will go in the scrap box, and we're going to actually put that in there. I have got that one, but that is in very nice condition. 
And because I can't remember the condition of my other one, I'm going to put it in here for now. Compare it with my other one, and whichever one I want to keep will be kept, obviously, and the other one will go in the full sale pile. I think this is a matchbox model of yesteryear. What am I doing my... I buried it, I buried it. <laughs> yeah, I think this is a moy, as I like to call them. Yep. A 19... Thirty-six, I think, SL100 Jaguar. 1977 is the copyright date. Leslie Products and Co. Limited. Now, I don't... I've said this before, but I don't go out of my way to buy the Matchbox models of yesteryear, but if I get them in a job lot like this, I do tend to keep them. It's just that cars of that sort of era don't really interest me as much. I guess for me it would be 50s onwards. <laughs> they look like Brago wheels. Can't see anything on the base anymore. Yes, 19th. I can't see if it's a 33 or a 38. Does it say here it's actually... No, that is a matchbox as well. Yeah, model of yesteryear. Ooh. What? Two models of yesteryear? No, possibly three. <laughs> Let's have a look at this one. I'll bet this one is. Oh, this one isn't a Jaguar though, this one's a Bentley. Oh, it's a Corgi. Corgi Classics. It's got Bentley written on the oil pan. Oil pan? Oil pan. Uh, the windshield has snapped on that one, unfortunately. Let me put that one in here for now. Lola Climax, made in Hong Kong, GTR-101, so I don't know who made it, as in the company, but that is actually a nice little solid uh, die-cast model for something made in Hong Kong. That sounds bad, doesn't it, when you talk about something made in China that way, because you just expect it to be crap, you're so used to it. You know, you're so used to stuff coming out of China, that's just total crap. And you get something like this, made in Hong Kong, and it is actually a nice little model. It does, uh... And that is sad, really, isn't it? But it just shows that they can do it. I think it's actually down to their customers a lot of the time as well. And whether they want something cheap as chips or... Oh, these are nice. I'm not really into my formula cars. What's this one? This is a Corgi F1 Lotus. I'm shoving the LEDs right in my bloody eyes. Made in China. Now my little brother, he's in the F1. He'll probably be watching that tonight if he's not working. What's this one? The Opel Lotus Challenge. Made in West Germany. Gamma, I think it actually has written on it. Well, I've never actually heard of that. Well, that is a very nice looking little model as well. I've just realised that this Corgi has actually got rubber tyres on it. Little majorette one here. Little majorette. 
do like Majorette, especially their older stuff, not so much the modern stuff. Mind you, in fairness, I've not really given their modern stuff a chance because I find it extremely hard to find. Made in France because it's French. Shadow DN5. It's got the number of Majorette written on it. This one's a matchbox and I totally forgot this existed. But I remember having one when I was little. F1 Racer 1984. I like that. That's a definite keeper. That is not in bad nick either. A few little scruffs on the bottom there, but that's pretty much it. Someone like their race cars, but I've just found another three. Four. <laughs> oh. oh, that one is complete. Five. Let's do all those. We'll get them out of the way, shall we? Actually, I've already got this tractor, so that can go in the full sale pile. I don't know if it's desirable or collectible or anything like that, but. Got this one. So we've got five more to go through. More than that in the bag, we've got five more of these race cars. Oh, it's a Polsky branded one. Brab Brabham BT. You've heard of that Polisky one? I think it's Polisky, something like that. I have got another couple of models by this brand. Made in Italy. With a name like Poliski, I bet you weren't expecting that one, because I wasn't. <laughs> this is a little Lesney, I know that one, Matchbox. Made in England. It's a Lotus. I've actually written it that way. Lotus with all four tyres, which is good. Uh, I've got a feeling this one could be another Polsky one. Polisky. It is. It's just got the exact same writing underneath. It's just in a different colour. I've got a white one. I've got a Honda here. Not a majorette. And that one's oh, it's got copyright 1984 written on it. McLara or something? MC something International Limited. Oh, McLaren. I've actually put it as two words. I always thought it was one word, McLaren. MC Laren, it's got written on there. You can see it. I'm sure that's what that is. McLaren. I could even be just speaking out the wrong bloody name entirely. I don't know. It's either an N or a D, something like that. Oh, it's another one of these, an Eagle Weslake, this one, GT, made in Hong Kong. It's another one of these um, lovely little ones made in Hong Kong. If I get any more of these racing cars, I'll have to start a cabinet. Oh, hello. Oh, it's a dinky. I'm trying to dazzle myself with the magnifying lights again. Jaguar 3.4 litre. Dinky Toys Limited. Meccano Limited, England. Someone's given it a bad red paint job in its time, but 
ideal resto project. Not really my thing, so I might actually stick that one up on eBay. I don't know, because I've been wanting to collect these older dinkies. I don't know if I want to keep that one or if I just want to... Because the chances of me actually restoring that are slim. I've actually got enough stuff to restore if I ever want to, so... I may actually put that one up on eBay. I told you there was another one in here. <laughs> Three of them, I'm going to put that with that one. Oh, that one looks like that's a slightly different green. It is! That's a different shade of green. I don't know if it's going to show up well. I don't know why it looks, it looks so dark on my screen. I don't know if it is. But I've got these lights on. I've got the spotlights on. I've got the main lights on. It still looks dark to me. Well, as that one is a different shade, I'm going to keep that one. Right, so we've got Jaguar, 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 <laughs> Jaguar, uh, Jaguar, Jaguar, Escort, Jaguar, can't remember, and a Datsun, and a tractor, and a couple of boxes. Right. Okay. I haven't got this Jaguar, not from Corgi. Oh, there's a mix of Corgi and Matchbox. And then I've got four in boxes. Four boxed models. So, Corgi Juniors, Jaguar XJS. I don't have, I didn't have that one. I've got one now. I've got this one, another XJS. And apparently, you could only get this if you actually went to the Special Motor Show 82 edition. Now I think I've got a couple of these. I've got one where the writing is all worn off and I've got one that doesn't or isn't in as good nick as this one, I don't think. I'm going to check it. I don't know if it's collectible or... But I will check it against the other one. Let's get these bloody Jaguars out of the way. Now I don't think I've got this one. I've got a Volvo in this colour but not this particular Jaguar. I believe that's a definite keeper. Um, there's another one of those Corgi Jaguars that I showed at the beginning. Minus the trunk lid though. So that one will go in my scrap box as well. We'll have a couple. Got a Husky here, Fire Chief Jaguar. light has been pushed in. We've got crack in the windshield as well. I have got a number of these old Jaguars from Matchbox as well. Although this one actually looks like it's meant to be in a different colour to my others. Um, I'm going to put that one in the for sale pile. I've got a few of those. If I want to paint them different colours, I can. Oh, this is a Husky as well. Or an E-type Jaguar. Husky. Uh, and I'm pretty certain I've got this Jaguar. Actually, I know I've got this Jaguar. Apparently it was free with Kellogg's, maybe. I might explain the Tiger Stripes. It's probably in Frosties. Ooh. Excuse me. Um, I think for Jaguars, at least for now, that's exactly like the um, that Jaguar minus the boot lid that I got from Corgi. This is just a Husky version. Definitely keep the Huskies. All right. find it very hard, you know, to find these in decent condition. This one's an E-type. I think just about every one of these I've got is, has some kind of moderate play wear on it. Bit of a shame, I wouldn't mind trying to find, uh, you know, a, a decent one. Another one of these Escorts. These seem to be extremely common as well for Corgi. Three more matchbox here. 
I've got another tractor. I like these tractors, so I do like to keep them. I haven't got very many in green, though. Most of mine are blue. Uh, oh. One to go in my scrap box. It's missing the front wheels. I've already got this car anyway, but... I thought I could actually eBay that, you know? Someone would buy it for the parts. We've got yellow Ford Capri from Matchbox. It's a relatively modern one. So I've got the uh, blue coloured one and that one. I'm pretty chuffed with that. Right, I think... I thought it was four box to call. There's actually a boxed one in here, and I actually have no idea what it is. A Jaguar track car, apparently. Right. I'm going to see if I can't just fix this box with a bit of glue at some point. So it's a blue S XJS from Corgi. Quite a weird style of box, that one. But yeah, I'm going to try and uh, see if I fix that box. Now I have got a couple of these loose. But I don't have very many boxed corgis, especially ones in this type of box, so that'll get hung up and displayed. Um, now I will have my other one of these coming up for sale. Probably get put in a job lot for eBay, because I've got this one now in a box. So I don't see the point in actually keeping the loose one. Oh, we've got the original price tag on this as well. Barker's Great Yarmouth, £1.25. That must have been bought some bloody years ago. <laughs> you never get a model of this scale for that price now. I mean, you don't even get models of that scale for that price now. We've got this version as well. We've got two versions of the same Jag there. Not the pink one. I can't remember if I've got this one or not in the collection. <laughs> Last but not least is this one, a Jaguar track car. Have I got this one? I honestly I can't remember. I think I have actually. And I think I have got the box as well, so I'll have a look on my shelf. If this is up on my shelf, then this is another one that I can put up for sale. I mean, these ones, to be perfectly honest, they don't seem to fetch that much money. A couple of quid is about the most I ever see these go for. It's probably about the most I've paid for any. I think the ones I've got on my shelf were like two quid each from a charity shop, so... <clears throat> right, that's that lot sorted. And I do believe... Look at that! Hour-long video! I wasn't even watching the clock. I'm getting that good. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, actually, I just remembered. It was only because I looked down. Got these from the car boot sale as well for the model railway. That Land Rover set was just eight quid. That's the price on it. And then we got this one as well for three quid. So I guess I'm lucky in a sense. Because I can just pick any vehicle I want, within reason. <clears throat> Though, in fairness, big articulated lorries aren't really going to look that good in... Well, it depends if I want to actually go for a village scene or a town scene in the middle of it. I don't know. I suppose I could just leave it open to interpretation. That'd be a nice way to do it, actually. Just leave it open to uh, interpretation. Right. That can go down there. I've got a pile of old Leslie's on the floor there. Uh, that can go up on eBay as a job lot. Cool. Just got to remember those boxes are right behind me, so I won't be able to fall over them. Uh, locomotives can stay up there. Let's just 
just looking at the tires to see if they would be worth salvaging, but. See what colour it may have been originally. White, I think. And someone has certainly given that paint job. It's not. It wasn't the worst paint job. There's a little bit on the windows here and there, but I, you know, I have seen a lot worse. For some reason, one wheel is painted red, and the other three are still silver. I really, I really don't know what to do with that jack. Well, let's keep it for the time being. I can always change my mind. So, that is it for the video. I hope you enjoyed it and found the video interesting. If you did, you know what to do. Hit the like button. If you didn't, feel free to hit the dislike button. Uh, and as always, I will put links to my other two YouTube channels, Discord server, and my Twitch channel in the uh, video description down below here. And, uh, yeah, thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.